Hey, welcome back, it's Jason Walter here. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over my top five reasons why the HEROES Act will not get approved by the Senate. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm a real estate agent as well as a licensed certified public accountant or CPA here in Northern California. And on this channel, I post videos about how this pandemic is affecting our real estate market as well as personal finance topics. So if that is something that you're interested in, I invite you to subscribe. Okay, let's go ahead and dive back into the video. Just a few weeks ago, House Democrats approved the stimulus bill called the HEROES Act. And this proposed bill is 1,815 pages long. And if you haven't taken the time to review uh, or just skim through the pages of this proposed bill, I do invite you to do that. Just take 10 or 15 minutes to do that. But if you do not want to do that, I'll go over the provisions and the clauses of this proposed bill later in the video. After reading through the HEROES Act text myself, it became very apparent to me that this bill has 0% chance of getting approved. And I don't want to come across as being a cynic, um, but I also want to be realistic with you guys, um, especially for those who think that this bill or are hoping that this bill is going to get approved. So I just want to give you my honest opinion about why I feel this will not get approved by the Senate. There have been many stimulus bill proposals ever since the CARES Act was approved about two months ago. So for example, we've heard about the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act of 2020, and that would cancel rent and mortgage payments for the remainder of the state of emergency declaration. We've had the Monthly Economic Crisis Support Act, which calls for $2,000 per month payments. In addition, we've had the Automatic Boost to Communities Act, or the ABC Act, and then also called for a $2,000 payment with recurring payments of $1,000. In addition, we had the Emergency Money for the People Act, and that would provide Americans with a $2,000 monthly check for up to 12 months. And now we have the HEROES Act that was actually passed by the House of Representatives. The other proposed bills never made it to the congressional floor for a vote. The HEROES Act is more or less a mix of these previous proposals. And at over $3 trillion, this bill would be the largest piece of economic support legislation ever enacted in the United States. And by the way, just because the House of Representatives approved this bill, it does not mean that it is law or has final approval. In order for any bill to become law, it must be approved by the House of Representatives, which it has a Democratic majority, and also must be approved by the Senate, which has a Republican majority. Once those have been approved, it gets sent to the president for approval. So in other words, for the HEROES Act to become law, it must be approved by the Senate, and then it must be sent to the president for final approval. So here are my top five reasons why the HEROES Act will not get approved by the Senate or the president. But before that, please hit the like button that helps support this channel and videos like these tend to take hours and hours to make with all the research involved. So I greatly appreciate it if you just hit the like button to help support this channel. All right, let's go ahead and dive back into the video. The number one reason why I feel the HEROES Act will not get approved by the Senate is that the Senate Republicans have already expressed that this proposed bill is dead on arrival. Let me share some examples with you. So U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said, forget about this $3 trillion left-wing wish list. Senator James Lankford, which is a Republican from Oklahoma, he said that most folks are very grateful for the help at this point. I don't think we should set up a situation where we're doing a check month after month after month. Senator Mitt Romney, who is a Republican from Utah, said the prospect of Congress funding another round of rebate checks is unlikely. He said Congress instead will be looking at unemployment benefits and aid to states and cities and towns. Senator Lindsey Graham, who's a Republican from South Carolina, she said that I'm not enthused about another round of rebate checks. In addition, Senator John Kennedy, who is a Republican from Louisiana, he stated the following. He said that it's not going to pass the Senate, nor should it, and he's referring to the HEROES Act. Uh, we fellow Republicans in the Senate have tried to see things from the Speaker's point of view, but we can't get our heads that far up our rear ends, and I think any fair-minded American would agree. So clearly there's not a very good response to the HEROES Act. The list goes on and on with the lack of Republican support for this bill. Additionally, when the HEROES Act was introduced, the president responded and said that the proposal was dead on arrival. What's really telling for me is what Nancy Pelosi stated. And she said that we're putting our offer on the table, meaning their offer of the next stimulus package or the HEROES Act. And she says, we're open to negotiation. So no one makes an offer and then says we're open to negotiations 
unless they feel they're asking for too much. I think it's very clear that the Democrats and the Republicans want something totally different. Um, so, for example, Mitch McConnell stated that Republicans are focused on practical solutions like legal liability protections for medical workers and the schools, universities, and businesses that will be trying to reopen. Therefore, it seems like the Republicans are really focusing on opening up the economy to get people back on their feet, uh, rather than pass the HEROES Act, for example. Number two would be the cost of this bill. At $3 trillion, that is 50% higher than the CARES Act that was just approved two months ago. Let me briefly give you some background information about this so you have some context about how big this number is. So in April, the Congressional Budget Office stated that for the fiscal year 2020, the federal budget deficit is projected to be $3.7 trillion. By the way, on a side note, the federal fiscal year ends on September 30th. They do not have a calendar year end. Um, but basically by approving this $3 trillion stimulus package, this would almost double the deficit. And keep in mind that over $2.5 trillion has already been approved. And that was thanks to the approximately $2 trillion for the CARES Act, plus an additional $484 billion to help replenish the Paycheck Protection Program, or the PPP. Therefore, it makes sense that lawmakers are not too keen to add an additional $3 trillion. Reason number three would be the lack of support from the Republican-led Senate regarding the extension of the $600 per week federal boost to unemployment benefits. If you recall, the federal boost of $600 per week was part of the CARES Act, and that is actually set to expire the end of July, so less than two months away. However, the HEROES Act would extend this all the way to January 31st, 2021, so an additional six months. I can understand why House Democrats are pushing for this extension. I mean, right now we have extremely high unemployment. So just last week, another 1.9 million people filed for unemployment benefit claims, making that a total of almost 43 million people who have filed for unemployment benefit claims just within the last 11 weeks. The initial reaction from Republican senators was that they were not interested whatsoever in extending this federal boost to unemployment. However, according to an article posted on The Hill, the Republicans may be changing their opinion on this. It states in this article that GOP lawmakers have changed their mind on ending the $600 per week federal benefit entirely because they are starting to realize, quote, once the money is out there in the economy, it's hard to take it back and that the nation may be saddled with long-term unemployment. It goes on to say in this article that with the potential of the looming 20% unemployment rate, that that may be a reason to extend this federal boost to unemployment benefits. However, not at the same $600 per week level. So for example, one of the proposals is for a back-to-work bonus of $450 per week for laid-off workers who return to their jobs. The article there also mentions some other proposals that are on the table, so it'll be really interesting to see what the senators come up with. Reason number four why the HEROES Act will not be approved by the Senate, in my opinion, is that there also is a big disagreement on whether or not immigrants who are living in the United States on whether or not they should receive HEROES Act stimulus payments. Under the CARES Act, you did not receive a stimulus check unless you had a social security number. However, according to the HEROES Act, you are eligible to receive a stimulus check if you have a social security number or an individual taxpayer ID number. These numbers, also called ITINs, are issued by the IRS and are used by immigrants in order to pay taxes in the United States. Regardless of your stance about this, Democrats and Republicans are going to have to compromise in order to reach an agreement on this. The Democrats say that this pandemic is affecting everyone in the United States regardless of their immigration status. However, Republicans are saying that this money should be earmarked for those who only have a social security number. Reason number five, and that is, in my opinion, there are far too many provisions and requests in the HEROES Act bill. I won't go over all of these in this video, otherwise this video will be three hours long and everyone will fall asleep. So let me just go over at a high level what the HEROES Act is asking for. That would include $1,200 stimulus checks for those who are single, making less than $75,000 per year, or if you're married filing jointly, earning less than $150,000 per year, you'll get $2,400. In addition to that, you'll get $1,200 per dependent for up to three dependents, and that also includes adult dependents. 
There's also protections in place for renters. So for example, there's a 12 month moratorium on tenant evictions due to non-payment of rent beginning on when the proposed bill is enacted. For homeowners who are experiencing a financial hardship due to COVID-19, the HEROES Act would provide up to a 12 month mortgage loan forbearance. It also states in the bill that the lender may not initiate foreclosure proceedings for six months plus a potential extension for another 180 days. They are also requesting a boost in wages for our essential workers of up to $13 per hour in addition to their regular wage. So this is essentially hazard pay. In the HEROES Act, there's also a section to even forgive up to $10,000 in federal student loans. It even has a clause in there that the cancellation of debt of this federal student loans would not be included in that person's gross income. And according to the IRS, cancellation of debt is normally included into someone's income. Therefore, it's normally taxable income. On top of this, they added a clause that would eliminate the $10,000 limitation that taxpayers can deduct for state and local income taxes or SALT. It's actually located on one page of the 1,815 pages. Before this $10,000 limitation was placed, eligible taxpayers were able to deduct all their state and local income taxes. So for those of you who live in a high income tax state, like myself, like in California, we were able to benefit from this. This $10,000 cap was added a couple of years ago, uh, and I'm all for eliminating this cap because I would love to uh, deduct all my property taxes, but I just don't see how this relates to the current stimulus package and how that would help our American people right now. So long story short, there's a huge amount of clauses and provisions in this HEROES Act, and I feel that the House started off the negotiation process too strong. To me, this is like going to a car dealership and offering $10,000 for a $30,000 car. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I always tell people that if you want a reasonable response, make sure you send a reasonable request. So do you agree or disagree? I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Leave me a comment below. Also, if you want two free stocks, click on the link below because Webull is giving away two free stocks with one of those being valued up to $1,400 when you deposit $100 on their platform. So if you want two free stocks, click on the link below and let me know which stocks you receive. Please subscribe to this channel and I'll keep you updated with new developments. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. You also can follow me on Instagram. I'm Sacramento Realtor. I hope you have an awesome day and look forward to seeing you on the next video.